on Rowlett Creek right now. You hear the lovely sound of traffic going by on the bridge. Exactly. If you hear background noise, kind of like uh, at the live podcast, uh, we're actually out in the outdoors tonight. We um, just posted a picture on the Instagram. Yep. It's Sunday night, and we are sitting at Rowlett Creek um, with a bunch of minnows, some bobbers, because the sand bass run has supposedly started, and I don't know if you believe in the fact that the sand bass run starts when the dogwoods bloom, but I saw some dogwoods bloom and assumed that we were going to have some success tonight. I mean, that's that's a pretty solid, uh, you know, saying, you know, once the, they start blooming, that's when you need to start tra- targeting the sand bass. Get out. And sandies are awesome. Yeah, so we'll see what we can do. I'm, I came past here earlier today, and it was packed, and all the little creeks except for the, the one was is packed full of people, so... Hopefully, uh, if we're in the middle of this and you hear a bell ring or somebody go, oh, hold, hold on. on, hold on. <laughs> it's because uh, somebody's trying to retrieve a fish and we'll do it live on the podcast. So, Yeah, we kind of threw this uh, evening together, so Last hopefully minute. with the uh, lack of uh, tactics that we uh, decided <laughs> yeah. to use. Yeah, we piecemealed this together pretty quick. This is, uh, yeah, this is... This is coming at you live and off the cuff for sure. So that's uh, as it should be. As it should be. No, that, that, on that's natural, uh, no editing. Right on Raw. point for uh, Stormwater Creek here. <laughs> exactly. Like, last minute planning. Hey, we, we got do. time. Let's let's run out to the lake or let's run out to this piece of woods and yeah, stomp right around off, with a bow. Right off of a, a major road, and uh, you know, do it like God intended to do it. Uh, what did you guys think about the live podcast? Man, yeah, that was that was good times. It was so much fun. Yeah. So many good people. It was a lot of fun. Took a lot of good feedback. Yeah. A lot of attention for BHA. Most importantly, big fans of those guys. Absolutely. So, I thought it was neat just having that many people, kind of who public land hunt in the state, go after it. So, it's kind of nice to be around people like that, and every single one of those events we've done, and or been at and around full draw going to tailwaters and hanging out with Sean or anything like that. It's always so much fun, you know? So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy to happy to be a part of that crew. The, another cool thing about that live podcast was the, uh, cacophony of different people we had. Yeah. There was an art show going on. There was a sports podcast going on and there was, at least one birthday or something, or anniversary. So yeah, oh, it was, it was, was a birthday for the uh, that surprise birthday. During the sound check, we had to like stop, <laughs> yeah. so they could they, they could surprise. We were nice enough to be like, hey, you know, we can stop and y'all can surprise her when y'all are walking in. Yeah, it was uh, that was interesting. It's cool to have Ryan Bussy there. Oh yeah, neat to hear him talk. Um, I'm uh, I'm glad that. Those guys that are big Western public land advocates and advocates for all public land are still able to get down here to, to little old Texas where, I don't know, do you guys get annoyed as I do when people talk about how it's like, oh, well, Texas is just not a public land state, but we I, are. I understand the sentiment, yeah. but yeah. I also don't understand it. I don't get it like It's hard work, and it's... it's, it's I mean, I, I I can't say the success rate's lower because I don't know the numbers based on you know Western yeah. hunts because I know Western hunt numbers are, are minuscule also for success rates. Yeah, ten fifteen. But it's percent. much harder work, and there's far less land. But on the other side of the coin, as you all know, that you know Texas is a giant. Yeah. So our six percent, seven percent public land is still what a million acres. Uh, yeah, hundred. One- 1.7, yeah. But I think that's, I, I wanted to look that up. That was an interesting thing I wanted to look Here. up. Was that, does that I'll, include? I'll be Putellis. Core, does that include all of the core land as well, or is that just what the Parks and, Texas Parks and Wildlife does? Um, you know, I, I don't know, actually. That's a, something I've been meaning to look into. I mean, but they're all, uh, I mean, that, and that's a thing, you know, like, that's one of the hardest things too about public land is you know that there's some parks out there that you can hunt on there's some parks out there that have draw hunts where they allow people to come on you know and uh 
hunt something that they have an overabundance of and uh, you know that also does that count like even places like Hagerman and uh, so you, like that's like uh, national forest land yeah so because we, we have we have what like three national forests Caddo or Caddo Caddo's one LBJ grassland but see Caddo's a little bit different yeah since Caddo the Texas Parks and Wild, Wildlife loan or lease that yeah. land for the Texas Parks and Wildlife system so it's kind of ran by both from what I understand mm. that could be kind of wrong I could could have read that in the wrong uh, light but there's so uh, much information out there and stuff out there that it's hard to Sometimes it's hard to pinpoint everything. Yeah, you know, but I think that's one of the fun things about Texas is like, you know, you have so little, so you re it really makes you want to look and find those little nooks and crannies because you know there's all kinds of ways to hunt public. It's not just what's in the book. Like you find little like, you know, land grants that are off to the side. You know, you got the uh, uh, Army Corps of Engineering uh, that have lakes that have a little bit of land where it's actually public yeah and it's not really listed as public but it is a hunting land yeah and sometimes those can be gold because most people don't work that hard to find those exactly. places they go to the easy ones where it's in the book it's there it's down the street and they just go to it so that's another way to get further away from people without really putting some shoe leather to it is to be able to find those little spots you know there's also uh, you know I don't know the exact uh, you know legal limits of it but it is a thing where a lot of rivers you can float down a river on a kayak and find some spots uh, to hunt right off the river yeah. you can turkey hunt you can deer hunt you can duck hunt uh, we have figured out though I think officially from Texas Parks and Wildlife that if you're on a kayak you do have to you can't be floating and shoot from a moving uh, boat you gotta be out in a kayak well you can be in it it just has to have full stop like you have to have the anchor down or you have to be yeah you have to be stopped you, you, like your motion has to be stopped you can't hmm. like paddle a little bit then put your paddle and let the current take you through and you know sneak up on a turkey or something like that you have to be stopped from what i understand see that would be awesome we, we, we had we, we, we had some uh discrepancies through the uh uh actual law because the law says that you have to stop all cell or motor power so if your motor power is just your arms yeah it's, it's still know, a big gray area, area but, it's, it's a gray area but i asked we, that we during asked. my waterfowl class i said so can you float the current and duck hunt and they said no you have to be stopped so you know, take that what you will that was a, from someone that works for Texas Parks and Wildlife I think eventually we're, we're, we're working to try to find a uh, game warden to be on the podcast and we're yeah. going to ask him all kinds of questions like that you know like and and see what you can and can't do yeah I'm trying to uh, we're, we're trying to track down one of those guys who will come on the podcast for us and if you know anybody who wants to and you're listening please email us or hit us up so yeah it's a, always an interesting topic the law is always one of those weird things it's how it's written and what things are and aren't and I know there's a bunch of rules yeah, there's a bunch of rule changes coming through I think uh, on Monday tomorrow, I think maybe Monday the 6th I mean this podcast will come out way after that but uh, I know there's some rule changes coming down, so it'll be interesting to see what the Texas Parks and Wildlife releases about that. Mm -hmm. um, I know they're doing a big Facebook Live thing, which I appreciate getting on there, taking questions, and um, kind of laying out what the, the proposed rule changes are. But it seems like more than anything, it's it's a lot of changes for private landowners and things like that, not a lot of public land. There's There was one public land, it's a distinction for antlerless, which I was not really... I'm interested to see what that means. Um, you can only take antlers with a bow, or I, it was a, kind of a one of those gray areas that we're talking about. So I'm interested to see how that turns out. 
I'm ready to shoot a turkey. Man. Real what, bad. What are you doing to get ready for Hagerman? Um, I'm planning on going to put some uh, boots on the ground here soon. Um, one of the good things to be a part of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, uh, one of the guys that is in Backcountry Hunters and Anglers have been uh, hunting some hogs out there and doing some other things, and he said he's seen some sign. So he was going to kind of give me some spots that he's seen some. So when I go out there, I can uh, have a couple spots already kind of laid out that I definitely want to check. Um, so when you're out there scouting for turkeys, um, what do you? What's going to be kind of your game plan for, you know, looking for sign? I mean, what are what's what's kind of your game plan for once you get out there? What are you going to do? You know, I'm going to try to go out there and do the old. Uh, uh, do the old. Did you, you get stripped? Yeah, you got, I did. I kind of thought earlier. I felt some. Yo, I don't know if it was nibbling. I don't know if I flung him off. I know I said this before we started rolling, but like that's why those uh, glow in the dark uh, bobbers are good. Right now, you really can't see the water. Well, I'm not guys, running a bobber. And, you know, just you, running. You don't run a bobber, huh? What'd you say? I'm not running a bobber. I know that's what I'm saying. That's Drop why. Shotting. That's well. That's why they're good because you you know. Even on a drop shot, like, you're not feeling a whole lot because it's just different. But anyways, so, yeah, for the uh, trying to get ready, I'm trying to find, you know, I want to get out there early and stay out late so maybe I can find some place where they're roosting. Yeah. Maybe try to find some tracks near some water. There's some creeks up in there that uh, – I want to walk and see if there's anywhere where it looks like they're coming in a lot. Coming uh, in for water or something. I'm interested you know. to see. Um, I just scouted uh, turkeys at Caddo last year, and, and trying to find those easterns was crazy. Uh, you know, they just don't talk at all. So um, I think it's going to be kind of cool to be able to go try to chase some western, uh, some western, some rios um, for for this year and try to use them talking a little bit more. And But then again, I don't know. Like, I wonder if rios on public land – are as vocal, oh, excuse me, as they are on private land, you know? I mean, because our private land, we've got good, you know? They make noise all the time, you know? So I'm interested to see what the uh, what the deal is, you know? I feel like they are. I feel like that's just the behavior. Yeah, it's just the, as a species. Mm-hmm. On, so am I, am I wrong on this? But even the Easterns, you can still crow call and scare them can't you you and i've hunted easterns enough i think they, they don't say much they just, you very shy yeah very shy animals that's for sure um but i've got that uh, i got my lake whitney permit and uh i'm ready to go out and try to hammer something on whitney for sure you know i need to get on that i suppose yeah, i'm gonna, from- gonna hit new mexico this year too for turkey? Yeah, I got invited out. What do, what do they have up there? Will we all be it's targeting? Over, it's over the counter. Well, but like what? Rios. What the, Rios? Like if you get super south, you can get in a, in a what is it? Uh, uh, man, I'm tired. Not oscillated. Oh, uh. Uh. Osceola? Yes. If you get in southern New Mexico, you can get an Osceola. But That'd be Rios. cool. Would be real cool. That would be very cool. I don't think we're going that far south. Everybody's getting quiet because they're throwing things in and maintaining lo- the lo- fishing. Lo- looking you know? up, yeah, you know, it's uh, multitasking. Code. Multitasking, yeah. Uh, that was the first cast ever um, I've ever done on a podcast, which is kind of cool. I took my headset off, so that doesn't count, does it? I <laughs> uh, will count it. I'll- I mean, I think it should count. I mean, you're, you're technically still on a podcast. Yeah. You know, so. But, uh, you know, we got some new gear, so we're able to, to come out here and do some remote stuff like this. So I'm excited about going out and chasing turkeys with you boys this year and being in, uh, <laughs> you know, little different areas than we were last year with Caddo. We were yeah. both chasing them up there and just to no success, but... That is uh, one of my biggest goals of 2018 is to finally punch my turkey tag. and mm-hmm. I'm excited to try some turkey schnitzel. 
Absolutely. Know? I think that would be pretty good. Some what? Turkey schnitzel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like schnitzel. Pound, out Pound it bread. flat. Bread it and go. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think that would be fun. And, um, you know, I just want to I, I just want to be sitting at the base of a tree and hear that gobble. Oh yeah! Watch that thunder chicken come roaring through the uh, through the woods and hammer that thing. Do you yeah, do I, much like testing, like pattern wise, with your um, um, with your shotgun? Um, I never had. Actually, until. I'm looking into uh, doing my pattern this year before I go out. That's another thing I have on my to do list. It's real hard to find a place to do it. Um, pattern or shotgun? I have I have some property. I'm gonna go do it on. Guns. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, if, if if you'll let me. Ranges won't let you. I wonder why. You can shoot. You can shoot, but they'll like they'll let you shoot the the smallest you can shoot is like buckshot. I guess they just don't want it everywhere. I, I don't know. It. it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, it seems like on a pistol range, you would be able to I guess. set up and just I'm like let me take like five shots. Yeah. That that'd be interesting if anyone if anyone listening to this in the area the dfw area knows of a place to actually let you pattern your shotgun yeah. at it yeah, reach out to us reach sure. out to us let us know because we like to give that information to other people we get to pattern our guns at that waterfowl class which is cool right but that was only for your uh you know duck, duck loads, right? yeah but i mean it should i should reflect the pattern of the gun mostly you should it shouldn't move much the con con how the pattern density will change so the well and It'll change too with the the load. I mean, if you're using a turkey load compared to like a sure, if you were pellets, two, you know. I'm talking. I guess I'm talking up, down, right, left. I don't know. There's, I'm I'm no expert at all. Likewise, don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a, a a new experience for me trying to pattern a shotgun. You know, I've always been the guy that's like, it's a shotgun. You just point it, and you know yeah. the blast goes in somewhat of a point and shoot. Try to put it in the middle the best you can and uh but from what i understand uh and makes sense is you know your your choke itself will change your pattern you know from going from a uh, improved to yeah you know, i thought that was your line i uh, wish it was my line what it is is the current i'm getting caught up on this uh grass here yeah, I feel like mine's gotten pr pulled pretty close also. But yeah, so your different chokes will change your pattern too a lot. I mean, you're probably not going to shoot further left and all that, but you're definitely going to have a different, you know, focus of your uh, density of pellets. And I believe that's a whole reason for patterning as well is finding where you're actually going good, different loads, do different things, different brands find out where your shotgun's actually doing so you can kind of or just do what we've been doing and just go out in the woods and try to shoot something yeah. the best oh, you can. did you get one i think so get it on there oh he's off are you sure well that thing yanked maybe not but it sure did yank the wind's finally laid down, so. Should have had my bell on there. <laughs> well, and you need to find a different uh, place to, like, your uh, retrieving of your rod was uh, <laughs> underneath. I've got shitty. rod holders, and I forgot those, too, since this was last minute. Like yeah, we've already discussed how unprepared we are for this. You know, live and learn, you know, like. Hey, man, we just kind of were like, this morning we're like, uh, let's just. Let's go. Let's do this. So. You know your barber's right here, right? And it's getting bit. I know. Like literally in front of us, and it's getting bit. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> see, the secret is to fish at least four feet in front of you. Yeah, you know, where we're talking and creating the most uh, ruckus. It could be, you know, these lights could be attracting bait fish. Yeah. It's true. That's why I like the bridges a lot. The lights and the bridge. Just watch the barber <laughs> here on a yeah, podcast. Yeah, here, podcast. Like, this is an enthralling podcast, I'm sure, for everybody. Did he get stuck? I think I'm stuck on something. Maybe it's a huge catfish just locked to the bottom. Let's call it that for right now. Well, I tell you, it's funny. Last year, I was fishing creek style, bank style like this, and um, I uh, my bobber went under, and 
I was like, oh man, oh well. There goes that bait. There goes that bait. <laughs> um, bobber and. Uh, <sighs> so uh, I was fishing. The bobber went under, and I was like, oh, I got something. So I, uh, I reached down, and I grabbed that pole, and um, all of a sudden, I was like, man, I'm a, I must have be hung up here because this thing is not moving. And uh, I was like, because I was fishing like this, so I figured maybe like a tree or something had floated underneath, or I, I don't, that was my best of guess. And so I'm pulling and reeling and reeling. I'm like, well, it's coming up, so I must be just caught on something big. And all of a sudden, this foot and a half wide snapping turtle emerges out of the water. I was like, oh! I tried to get him up on the bank, but he uh, he snapped my line. So unfortunately, there was no uh, no video or 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 evidence. Of that, so I guess it doesn't count, right? That kind of giant bass last It depends how good way. of a fisherman you are. Your story can sound as convincing as you want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's true. Half of fishing is the storytelling. Yeah. That uh, big bass I caught last year. Last cast of the morning, 11 o'clock, you know, it's fishing time's over. I heave it out and with Texas rig creature bait and kind of bump it a little bit and Ah, hell, I'm hung up on something. And gave it a yank. And whatever it was hung up on, all of a sudden went left real hard. <laughs> Did you get something? I don't know. I'm just trying to be real hyper-vigilant about it. But, yeah, you just went left. Yeah, hardcore. all of a sudden the quote log I thought I was hung up on swam left real fast. <laughs> and it, it, it was a fight. It was cool. Big bass. Yeah, that goes to into the point of how lazy of a fisherman I am like we were talking about this earlier too like I keep two rods on me a spinner they're both both my rods are medium heavy fast action tip one's a spinner and one's a bait caster oh yeah one's rigged Texas rig all the time and the other is rigged for weightless wacky see I keep a wacky jig a Texas rig and I'd then one with a quick clip yeah for, for cranks or spinners I run yeah, three. I, I haven't gone as far as the quick clip yet. I probably need to because to that's what's a quick clip? It's this little thing you tie on that's not a it's not like a swivel clip. There's probably an official word for it. Something's been dibbling on mine right now. Come on. Get it. Get it. See it? Yeah. Get it. It ain't taking it. Let's see if they took that thing off. Cause it stopped. Nope. They're not very far out. No, they're not. I mean, um, all year long, I had, uh, last year, I had so much success just right four, three, four feet off the bank. And, uh, um, what were you saying? Quick clip. It's a little piece of, it's a little piece of wire. You can buy different weights, obviously. You tie it on, and you can, so you can switch your spinners and your, your, uh, crankbaits out really quick. I've got one up in the truck I'll show you when we get back up there. It's perfect for keeping a rod rod ready to rig. Yeah, rod, rod rigged, rod. ready to run. and ready to go. Ready to run spinners and crankbaits. You can just swap out colors and weights and stuff quickly. Don't have to retie. Yeah, that's that's pretty much why I keep my rods set up that way. Because yep. especially during the summer, you know, when they start spawning, and they're going on the beds. And even during the summer where it's nice and warm and they're not lethargic like when the water's cold and, you know, slow by. I, I'm not a slow fisherman. I suck during the winter time. I, I don't do good because uh, I'm always I, I burn baits through the water real fast. But you know, with that with that rig set up, I can switch out colors of all kinds of plastics, flukes, creature baits, all that stuff. And then if they're not biting that, I can switch over to my wackies and uh, run whatever color worm, see if they're biting. And if I really get froggy, then I'll I'll switch out my bait caster to some crank baits or something. But, hmm. you know, this kind of fishing right here, like, this is not what I'm used to. Like, yeah, this is... Me neither. I, but it's, I, it's fun. I enjoy this kind of fishing, to be honest with you. I like to work plastics like you do. Yeah. I'm... I don't know what it is. Like, you know, the craze of, of you know, running swim baits and all that stuff. Whoa. I know, I'm hung up. Oh, I was like, Whoa. I bet there's just a bunch of junk floating down this river. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You're bending that rod over towards us. I was just ready to get smacked Smack. in the face yeah, with something. Exactly. <laughs> oh, and podcast over. Like, did you 
save anything? <laughs> oh no. No. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh no. Because that leader so, on that drop shot was. Well, see, the, the the fun thing about this is we're actually getting on recording, like how much we're actually sucking it. Yeah, I know. Like, this is real life. This is real life. You know. They don't show you this on the fishing shows. <laughs> you know. There's one right after another, and they're like, God, I broke off again. Yeah, because they're smart when they, when when they get hung up. They get hung up, and it looks like they set the hook. And then you can kind of, it kind of looks like you can tell like they might have cut it right there, and then all of a sudden he's <laughs> reeling in a fish. Yeah, yeah. Like, huh, exactly. Like that, that wasn't me hung I up. I feel like you had different bait on last time <laughs> I saw this. Genius editing, if you ask me. That's the the magic of television, man. The magic of television, exactly. Cut. I know we're not. Uh, there's no. There's no magic in editing here. There's. This is just straightforward. Like, what you see is what you get. You know. I feel like we wouldn't have it any other way, but. We have some people fishing down below us, though, as well, so I wonder how they're doing. Um, I don't know. Like I said, it's been packed out here lately, but... This isn't oh, a bad spot, really. I mean, like, cool. it makes sense that it'd be... And I've you can tell by the, how, how packed down the bank is that there's definitely some activity around here. Oh, yeah. I've got an idea. They get after it here. Um... They definitely get after it. So while we're sitting here and y'all rigging up, Abe, uh, you're telling me yesterday that you're uh, you're gonna jump uh, both feet in straight into the deep end of uh, fly fishing here soon, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, you were telling me that too. Oh you know, you start man, tying us yeah. flies. I lucked out, and and I have a very very dear friend uh, of our family who is uh, he's been a fly fisherman for a lot of years. Um, and uh, tied his own flies, fished all over the country. And uh, a couple months ago, he was like, hey, look, I, I just thought we, I was talking to him how I've been wanting to get into fly fishing. And uh, he was like, well, I'll tell you what, if you if you want to get into it, uh, I'll, I'll get into it. I'll, I'll get you everything you need and um, you can just have all my stuff. And I was like, what? And uh, so he reached out to me the other day and was like, let's get lunch and let's get you this stuff so you can get after it. And so I got two five weights, an eight weight, um, some real nice wading boots and uh, nice. hip, like waders, hip waders. Or? Hip waders, nice. but, with like, but with boots that you put on and everything. So um, uh, got a vest and I got a whole, I got like everything to tie flies I need. I mean, there's no. I could start tying flies right right away, and so I'm I'm excited about trying to go after that. I don't think that'll be a lot of fun, you know. Yeah, it was funny because like yesterday we were we were gonna go fishing, and I was trying to set up to go in the morning and stuff, and you're like, well, I can't go. I got lunch with a friend, and I'm sitting here going, I'm you rather go friend. have lunch with a friend, than go get in your kayak and go oh, try I saw to fish that. in the morning. I had the and same I, idea. I, like, 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 I was wait, like, you know, this is his decision. <laughs> This is his decision, you know, but like I'm, I might have to to pull his uh, fisherman card. Yeah, I'd be you like know, for this. And then when when you called me up, you're like, hey, I gotta run by my house. I'm like, dude, you weren't prepared. Like, like I would have been ready to go right after lunch. I was. And, th and then I found <laughs> out you were like, I got all this gear that I just got dumped on, and I was like, oh, it was that kind of lunch. Well, good show, man. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I, I I'm thought, now impressed. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to get all that. So, I mean, I had my, my kayak loaded and everything. I was I was ready to go. And um, I, I thought I'd get a fly fishing rod, and and that was it. And uh, so I was just going to throw that in the truck and head right. on out. But then it was, all right, here it all is. I was like, oh, my God. I'm going to go ahead and take this back home. Yeah. No, and not no. leave this in the parking lot. Like, what, you know. That's one thing that I've noticed about fly fishing that, you know, I haven't jumped too far into it yet because, you know, not that it's a bad thing. It's not horribly expensive, but it's not as easy as going to get a Zepco rod where you can catch fish no matter what. Like, you know, like you, you're at least spending $50 or more at least. And Just then hanging out, And then hanging out at uh, Tellwaters and stuff like that, I, I feel like I need to spend... 
even more money and walking through there you know you're just like oh i need yeah i don't even know what this is but i need it <laughs> so jordan you know wes our mutual yeah, friend oh, yeah he's done lucky tackle box for a couple of years now that subscription service yeah, he, yeah you know since he got his fly gear a few months ago he switched his lucky tackle box i don't remember if he does lucky or mystery but if lucky or mystery tackle box is well, listening and wants them. to sponsor us we'll all be happy to mention you every podcast but that's neither here nor there <laughs> <laughs> just, just throw it um, out there go on <laughs> he switched his to fly and he said his last box was his first one he said he loved it he said he looked up everything he got and you know it's 20 it's $20 a month and he got at least 60 bucks worth of flies wow yeah. so he said it's, it's worth every penny yeah I can imagine it's uh it's very much worth it you know He's got so much bass tackle now after doing that. I did um, I did one. I forget what it was called, which means that we won't be sponsored by them. But um, I did one. I don't think it was lucky that it was worth it, man. It, I, you know, you paid 25 30 bucks a, a month, and you get plenty of stuff. So, Well, now there's a box for everything. I saw there's like a, a there's bow a hunter hunting box. box. There's yeah. A, yeah. White tail hunting box. I mean, like, there's all kinds of stuff. There's a butcher box. Oh, yeah. You know? I've seen that. A lot of people are plugging that. Um, there's a... Uh, I've seen the sportsman's box, which my wife gave me for Christmas one year. Um, so... Well, I'm like, I mean, I, I can see that, because, like, I... Like, I don't, the way I, I get my fishing tackle and stuff like that is I take my daughter, who's six now, and my wife, and uh, I'll, you know, I'll want, like, a crankbait. I'll take them to the crankbaits and be like, here's a couple of the styles that I want, you know, pick out a couple colors y'all like, you know, because the way I look at it is, you know, you never know what a fish is going to like and bite, you know, it doesn't. Oh yeah. You know, I have my tried and trues that I really like color wise. Especially on uh, crankbaits. I like whites with some yellow and some red in there and I like blue and chrome a lot. I've I've had a lot of luck with those but with what? Blue and chrome. Blue, blue and chrome. And uh, but like you get yourself stuck in a rut where you're just like you just buy that, that color all the time. I did that with uh, with brush hogs. You know, all the, all the creature bait and yeah. uh, uh, Grinch helped me get out of that rut a little bit because we went and I had the tried and true uh, watermelon red. Black and blue, my friend. And, uh, you know, it kind of failed me and Grinch was snatching them out with black and blue. And, you know, so now I keep both of them and they're not biting one, I try the other and normally and now I have a kind of more versatility. I think that's the way to go. You know, it's just being as adapt. I mean, it's just like anything that we've learned on public land, even. Just being as adaptable as possible, um, which typically takes a little bit of time to build up if you're not, uh, you know. But uh, I think that's the, uh, that's the key because, I mean, when I started fishing really hardcore, I was just trying. Like, that's why I just switched over to, like, this live bait thing just because I was having so much. I was having such a tough time with trying to get things with lures you know um and so i just was like well let's just try this live bait thing and see what happens and we'll go from there and um uh, i had some success last year so now i've been i'm stuck in that rut of well let's go get some minnows and go sit on the bank or go get some minnows and tie up somewhere on a on a stump somewhere and and fish that way you know i mean and there's nothing wrong with live baiting a bobber i mean I've seen people catch all kinds of stuff on them, you know, and I've, I run stink bait for catfish, you know, the little sponge with the little stink bait. Yeah. Um, my grandfather used to make homemade stink bait, you know, and that stuff would catch a catfish like you wouldn't believe. I've got some catfish bait on me right now. I bet you do. I, I bet what that you do. means. You know, but the re Abe, see, the reason why, uh, you know, lure fishing never worked for you is because I'm looking at your rods and you didn't spend two hundred dollars on your stick and you know about five hundred dollars on your reel. 
That's that, that's your problem. I mean, I thought that that was my problem, and it's funny how you go into these tackle shops, and that's what they're they're telling you. You know, you're like, well, there's no way you can run a forty dollar Walmart rig, catch fish, but you can if you got your little dip net and some minnows. <laughs> some minnows. I got me a bubble box here. Yeah, I was I was hearing that noise, and I was like, what the hell is that noise? And then I look over, and and you have your little uh aerator and all that running over there oh yeah i got to like, like you definitely have the setup i got the setup for a lot of bait that's for sure all right now so i'm going to try this hook him through the back you said right yeah yeah hook hook, but, but you want to be like i need a minute right two. above the spine you don't want to hit that spine because you want him to still wiggle You get him? Yep. Rock on. Next way you're tying up, you know, like, if you hook him through the nose, he's going to fall straight up and down a lot more. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right. I think I got a mess <laughs> on my hands. <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> How did you do that? See, this is the this is what they don't tell you about. <laughs> Fish with live bait, they said. It's way easier. It'll be fun, they said. They said. <laughs> It'll be fun, they said. Now, I, I, I try not to, to turn my nose up any style of fishing because, you know, like, there's something about, you know, sitting on a bank, throwing a bobber out there, sitting there bullshitting with your friends, you know, doing whatever. And then there's a time and place for, you know, Throwing some crankbaits out there and getting serious about well, it. Well, that didn't fly very far. Oh, yeah. Um, you know. That's my thing, right? Is um, I'm going to, uh, you know, once it gets warmer out, that's exactly what I plan on doing, you know. Is, is uh, what? Is getting uh, into the lure fishing a little bit more hardcore than I did last year for sure you know we'll get you fixed up I figured good don't you still have my little uh, bait caster in my truck right now so let let old uh, Abe here domestic violence take that and start practicing house. is there <laughs> no I don't know I'm just kidding what'd you say I said there's a little domestic violence going on right behind us but who am I to judge <laughs> in there. What? I mean... <laughs> no, I think that's something that's okay to judge. I think that's pretty judgeworthy. Yeah, that's definitely judgeable. I'm pretty sure you can judge that. Bait choices, line choices. Oh, uh, you, th Dad's trying to keep the children out of the knee-deep mud. That's not <laughs> that's domestic violence. Happening. That's dadding real hard over there. <laughs> Get out of the mud. No, 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 not that way. Not, not that way. That is... That what is, did you uh, do to your line? <laughs> it's something different. Did you just let it ride like that? <laughs> oh, that gives me anxiety. I got enough weight on there that it took the cork down. <laughs> I put those weights on there. Yo, yo, no, those weights are off. Oh, Grinch, yeah, you might not I did believe this, didn't. but sometimes I just rig my stuff up all messed up just to make you have that little twitch. Um, like I, the weight, I, I put two little split shots on there, and it took my bobber down. Yeah, you're running a little slim bobber thing, slip bobber. Running a little heavy. <laughs> oh, you put big split shots. Yeah, dude. I put, like, BBs too BB-sized. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention... This the is like catfish can... shot. Yeah. Cast his bait caster out here with... There we go. That works. Burn some... You can get one of them off? I'm trying. <laughs> mm -mm, not with my hands. Not with my hands. No, you need pliers. I don't have any on me. Oh, we're a nightmare. Dude. We are not. Y'all don't have pliers on you? Do you? Mine are up in, the in truck. my truck. <laughs> Everything we have is in, in the, the truck. truck. I'm like, I feel like we've gotten two bites. I felt some nibbles. Yeah? Yeah, just. Ow. 
Okay, I got one off. Sweet. My kneecap and my pocket knife. Kneecap and pocket knife. <laughs> <laughs> like a boss. There we go. I'm running through all Abe's lines, I think. Sure. We'll take them. How y'all doing? Did y'all have any luck? <laughs> <laughs> we heard y'all yelling at him. <laughs> So yeah, we're live again. Just had a little pause because we had a, a guy walk up to us. One thing I love about places like this is, dude was heading in, had a few extra minnows, and was like, "Hey, you guys want some minnows?" He had two dozen extra minnows. I went from, uh, I mean, I've got a a bait factory in here. I wonder how long I can keep minnows. Uh, change the water, but you have to dechlorinate it, and they'll be fine. Okay. It's it's the waste buildup that kills them. Hmm. I kind of know about this, <laughs> but we don't need to delve into that. Wonder what I need to do. Like just get. I'm, to, I'm no like, good at keeping fish. Apparently, I, I can't even keep. How many betas out. have you killed now? Huh? How many betas of your childs have you killed? Uh, now? Tiny Tex is uh, not looking too good right now. <laughs> Tiny Tex is. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Just change the water. That's all you have to do. That's what we do. How we often? Like every two weeks or something like that. Yeah, that should be fine. Uh, he doesn't get off the bottom. <laughs> he's sleepy. <laughs> no, he's not. You don't know his life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. We got some? You got one. I got one. Get it. Get it in the boat. Get it. He has to hit the boat to count. Uh -huh. <laughs> look oh, at that. yeah. Look at you. That's a nice fish. I just say, y'all go fuck yourself with your drop <laughs> shot <laughs> comments. Why, crappie? Yep. Oh, come here. Stop Dude. moving. Just stick your finger in the hole and he'll stop moving once he gets relaxed. Keeping it? Oh, hell yeah. Put him in there with the minnows. <laughs> <laughs> Fatten him up for the slaughter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fatten him on up. Then you don't have Ten to inches. That's two birds, one stone. Then you don't have to worry You're about close. it. close. No, yeah, you do have to worry about it. Worry about what? Oh, no, no, not the measuring. I, I meant the keeping the minnows. Yeah. yeah, he's, he's 11. 11. He's 11 inches. <laughs> You'll let. Is that your personal measuring tape? It's not the one that's... Uh, it's not like a guy. Like, every dude has no <laughs> idea what 8 inches is. <laughs> yeah. Where, where's your uh, Where's your crappie gauge that's that you, you have? You got to pop in the bottom of the mouth or gill? I need a different hook. I'm running like an octopus hook over here. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the classic whenever one person... Uh, Catches the fish, then yeah, everybody gotta do what involved. They're doing. Yeah, everybody involved changes. Like, what color are you running? We're running. We're out fishing one time. Uh, some of my buddies from work. Uh, a while back, we we're all on the boat. We we're out there for like a, one of the guys' bachelor parties or something like that. And we were just jigging. We we're out there, and one of the guys that was on the boat with us, he bought some crazy lure that was like it had like a propeller on it and. Oh yeah, my God. How deep were you running with the Bullman rig? All, all, all this stuff. The Bullman rig was a uh, like a two foot, like a what's that? About two feet? Yeah, I'd say about two feet. <laughs> I got a split shot. <laughs> we know. Drop shot we're it. good. We're good past that. The rest of it's a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> you got an extra and, hook over here. It, it brought bitch. fish in. Oh yeah. And there, there's a whole pack. I mean, they're all on leaders. So yeah, that's perfect. Right there, there's a whole group of them. I, sh I didn't bring the, it in my the small. The excitement of catching one fish is all of a sudden. <laughs> Everybody gives a shit again. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. Like, I'm like, eh, I'm kind of checking out. Like, nope. All of a sudden, the smoke turns to flames. And I didn't bring, like, any of my small fish rig. Trout or any of that mess. Any of that mess. So, yeah, we were out there in the water, and we we're all these boats were around us. We're dropping down. We're just pulling up sand bass. Just... Left and right. So, you know, of course, the other guys are noticing us pulling them in. And we're out there, you know, um, having a good old time for this bachelor party or whatever. And the uh, guy pulls up beside us. He's like, what are y'all running? And we're all running these uh, jigs that had the helicopter blades on them. And <laughs> one of the guys yelled out in the boat, Ro robot helicopters. <laughs> and that old man 
look through his tackle box for about 30 minutes trying to find out whatever the hell we were talking about. Robot helicopter. No, we didn't lie to him. I think somebody just stole my truck. It's okay. <laughs> That's why you have insurance. You're an adult. Exactly. All right, well. Man, I give I'm I'm back in the fish, fish again. First fish caught of the night. First fish caught on a podcast. Yes. Going live. Let's let's discuss how what this fish was caught on. Abe's line is so tangled. <laughs> that he's got may have a second bobber on there somewhere, but he's got an extra loop going south about 3 foot that's got some a giant catfish shot on it and there's a hook in the middle and a swivel in the middle somewhere. And he said, "Eh, I'll put a minnow on." Just put a minnow on, and let's do this thing. Hey, man. I'm sure they made fun of the first guy that put a fucking I'm sharp not rock fun. on the end I of the I think stick it's hilarious. Too. Hey, exactly. Grunk is over there with a st- stone on the end of a stick. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot. Grunk. What an idiot. Then who comes home with the fucking mammoth? <laughs> it's just like, you know, every, yo, you're supposed to run this rod for this and that, and you're supposed to... You on it again? You got another one? I got a fish. I wonder how long he's been on there. Oh, he's just been sitting there. Abe, Abe, <laughs> Abe's killing tonight all of a sudden. Oh, We got to do this more often. Look at that. Oh, that's a big Man, boy. that's a meaty one. Uh, oh, come here. Don't you fall. That's a, oh, yeah. That's a decent size here. copy right there. Let me get this one. Oh, I'll hold her for you. Oh, she's deep. You got hemostats. No, we don't have pliers. Oh, you know what? I do. You have hemostats? Yeah, hang on. Hey. Hold that bad boy up. There you go. That's a good one. It's a damn good crappie there. Look at you. And I was like, I think the line's real straight on that one. Maybe I should take a look at this. this thing? Oh. Pull your stringer out, buddy. Oh, yeah. So they're now trying to do surgery. We got it. We got it. We got a deep one. This we was on the one, one without the bobber that we weren't really paying attention to. Don't worry, you're getting a little. So friend. he was probably off the line for a while. Swallowed the whole minnow. But uh, luckily, he's uh, deep. Luckily, he's gonna get sacrificed. Uh, you mean he's give it a yank? Oh a, yeah, that's going into the frying pan. So. Yeah, just. We don't even need to measure that one. Oh, that one's getting bled. Yeah, like. It'll be a mercy killing, and uh, it'll be delicious. That's a nice fat crappie. It is. You've been talking about chasing crappie for weeks. Dude, I'm happy I, for you, my friend. This is the first crappie I've ever caught. Really? First couple crappies I've ever caught, really. That's awesome. Well, hell yeah. I, I actually, you know, to be honest, I was not really, like, I, I came very unprepared because I really didn't think we were going to we do all did. much uh, fishing. We all just kind of podcast up. at the same time. Me and me and Grinch both have at least uh, over a hundred dollar setups. <laughs> and, uh, and That's my here. rod. And and the Walmart, I've got a hundred dollars worth of all of my stuff here. Yeah. Here, string her up. And that, is that count the podcasting equipment we have here? Yeah, it's, and that's including podcast equipment. He's gonna die if he's not dead already. I mean, yeah. not that it matters. In, in fact, yesterday while we were out. He broke some of his line doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> and I asked him, I was like, what line are you running? He was like, I don't know. Um, Abu Garcia. And I was like, how old is that line? He was like, uh, maybe a year or so. When I got the rod. Yeah, so he's, he's running just like whatever came on that little spinner rod, four pound. Here, let's throw some minutes on this thing. That's, it, let's get this done. Now I'm, in, now I'm into this. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to get beat. I don't care about getting beat. Yeah, you Let's do. just catch some fish so we can eat them. <laughs> the the Bullman rig. The Bullman rig. You just got to get the biggest hang you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throw a, you head hooking or tail hooking? I, I, uh. I'm tail hooking. Yeah. Why are you, why are you tail hooking? Why not? <laughs> because everything I've tried to do that you're supposed to do so far has not worked. So who cares? <laughs> Exactly. I think our luck has changed just because, like, we're the only dudes left out, out here now. Straight out. Can you see it right there? Yeah. Okay. I was about to say, did you move it? You got a swimmer. He's a, he's a strong minnow. Yeah. yeah. 
Yep, yep. Don't you, are you moving it? No. You're going under for a second. Make, making the first mistake oh. of fishing and you're playing on your phone? I can't believe, uh... Man, your first two crappie, that's awesome. On the podcast. On the podcast. So, uh, did you use any of Cam's tactics on, on this catching? I can guarantee you, um, and I mean this, and absolutely zero offense to Cameron, but I can guarantee you no Cameron tactics were used on this because he would have been like, what are you doing? <laughs> no. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> Yeah, so well, Cameron's up in Montana. Is he? Oh, yeah. He is. I mean, he may be back now. I think he was getting back, supposedly, today or tomorrow. Um, for all of you people listening to the podcast, that is well into the past. Cameron's long been returned from uh, Montana. The, the, in, the look of very intent fishermen are going on right here. These guys are determined. You can see it in their eyes. <laughs> see it in their eyes. <laughs> you know, well, we Here got like a, oh. easy, son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. I mean, it doesn't get much better than just hanging out and shooting the shit with your friends and going from there you know I mean we've literally caught all these fish within f eight feet of the bank just outside the circle of light yeah just outside the circle of light I mean that's every time I've crappie fished the best thing I've done was bobbers with minnows and you know, I always like to stick one of those uh, uh, little light bars down in the water near the boat. I want one of those real bad. Oh, man. Dude, they work. They work for sure. But like when we crappie fish, like I told y'all, like that was always like, uh, it's kind of like bow fishing. You know, we had like a schedule we kept. So during the morning, we'd get out in the water, we'd bass fish, we'd hit it hard, we'd get all the spots. Then, uh, when the bass would normally start stop biting, they you know they don't stop completely for sure. My bobber seems to be moving oh, quick. You're getting a bite. Uh, yeah. Around uh, noon, when the sun's up and you see the the carp and all that swim the banks better because the lights piercing the water good. Just lift. Uh, I know it's gone though. Got robbed. I felt that was getting robbed. <clears throat> uh, then we'd switch over to bow fishing and all that. Hit me again. And then we'd stay out all night. During the evening, we'd start bass fishing again. Then once it starts getting dark, we'd throw the light in the water, park the boat up, boat up in a cove, and just start crappie fishing, pound those, and, you know, it normally turn out to be a pretty good day. But that light always seemed to help. It brings it up the bait. just pulls in those bait fish. Yeah, yeah exactly. Then, then you just get all of that, all of that return, you know, you just get the, all, you just kind of set up the set stage. I think that's where it's going on right here, too. We've got these two lanterns on. When you want to throw this one in the water? I'll throw my headlamp in the water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one right there was a, a solid $12 from, uh, a, from Home Depot. It's a good light. Day. I was like, man, this thing's not bad for 13 bucks. Well, I meant to bring, I, I forgot them, you know, like, like every, all of our other gear, all my small rods, all that stuff are at the house, but. I have those little pop-up ones Wit got from uh, Amazon for like 12 bucks for a four-pack. Yeah. Those things yeah. work fantastic. Put one of those in a gallon, reach its vacuum seal it, and then we could drop it in the water. Yeah. Yeah. So these are things we should have thought of like during the week. I mean, Abe could have brought his kayak set up. Yeah. Mine was in my truck before I came out here. Ugh. Oh, flipped yeah. Over you, my line. you did not do that very what? well. You're underneath your. I am you're underneath your stringer. All kinds of fucked up right now. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got it. Everything going on right now. That's right at my face. <laughs> Just let me know when to duck. I've now successfully caught a minnow. 
That is your other minnow. <laughs> you caught your stringer too. I caught my stringer. <laughs> I caught everything on that one. <laughs> uh, and you. This and was you the best idea we've had. I don't say that sarcastically. And he brought in a stick. <laughs> Just let's go podcast next to a river and see what happens. Hey, do you want me to hold something, buddy? I've got a lot going on here. I tried to come over and help, but I'm, I, I got this headset on. I got to take yeah. it off and, you know. You just keep the podcast <laughs> going. I've been trying. Like, I, I've been mesmerized by how uh, intense y'all are at getting into these crappie now. You got the Texas rig. You got the drop shot. You got the Ned rig. You got the Bullman rig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bull, the Bullman rig is uh, where it's at. Clearly. Tonight it is. That's why you're the anchor in the race. I don't even know how many... What in the hell happened here? <laughs> That's what we've been I, asking I, for like two hours. How did you get that rig set up? <laughs> no, it's... How am I looped around this hook? Four times. 1,200 times. I'm glad you caught two solid crappie. You've been talking about it for weeks. Yeah, you've been going nutso for crappie lately. Like, every time we talk to you, you're just like... I want to chase crappie. Do we need chase crappie. crappie vision? <laughs> oh my god, dude! I don't even know how in the hell <laughs> you were literally just fishing. <laughs> I don't know how I'm wrapped up like this. This you is know, uh, beyond. I've, I've fished with Braley a few times, and I don't think she's done nearly this bad of tangle ups. You want me? To I want that fishing rod to go out of the fucking way. Okay, I got you. I'll just hold this over here. <laughs> yeah. Calm down. Every, every time I hear those fish on the stringer jump over, I'm like, oh, 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 oh. I oh, know, me too. <laughs> is that a body floating out there? Or is yeah, that probably. A stick? That's probably a body. <laughs> it's okay. Down Rowlett Creek? God knows. Basically, the mini trinity. <laughs> this is straight up mini trinity. Well, there's a good looking crappie though. Both yeah, that one you caught was a meaty son of a gun. He's gonna make a great taco. Oh, I can't or empanada. Wait. Crappie cake. So, so y'all guys have been yeah. talking about this. So let's go ahead and shift gears here from talking about fishing. Let's talk about preparation. Now that we've got a few fish on a stringer, because y'all been talking about several things. The some some fish tacos. With crappie and the empanadas. Mm -hmm. So, how are y'all planning on doing all that? I don't have any fish on the line, so I don't know. I plan on... Calling Grinch? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why, if you notice, I was looking at him, A, because... No, I'm not going to... I don't speak for animal parts that aren't mine. I think I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to cut them up and fillet them out. And, uh... Then uh, into the uh, – for these, I'm probably just going to uh, – depending on how many I get, I want, what I really want to do is some crappie cakes. That sounds delicious. Oh, dear God. This is not good. None of this is supposed to be like this. All right. I wish I would have thought of this earlier because it's not as good. You're because I got the again. very end of Abe doing this, but I'm going to put this up on the Please do on social media. This is not what Grinch it's supposed over there to be. That's called fantastic. the Bowman rig? <laughs> this is called the Bowman rig. <laughs> it seems to work. Look, look, look at all those twists. Hold. I mean, that, that caught a fish. Just so everyone Legitimately, knows that caught a fish. We're doing all kinds of new stuff. Videoing while we're podcasting. Podcast. People are going to listen to this and be like, this was the worst podcast pod on the face of the planet ever. Or the best. Or the best. I like your positive thinking, Abe. I mean, who else does shit like this? Not many people do this. Oh, my goodness. But this is what Stormwater Creek does for you. We get out in the middle of the night. On a, on a school night. On a school night. Bowman rigs up a bunch of rods. <laughs> God knows how any of this is working. Whoops. 
I mean, I feel like the quickest thing to do is just cut all this off and re-rig this. I don't necessarily disagree with you. I'm, I'm not even going to put, like, any words or anything on that. I'm just putting it up on the story. Straight, Holy crap, I untangled that. I untangled that! I made fire! <laughs> I made fire! It's like when you get a bad bird's nest to your bait caster and you're like, there's no way out. Like, you already no. have your scissors out, ready to cut stuff. And then you get it done. Then you get it done, you're like, I'm what's a god up? among men. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> what's up? Like, I watched a video one time of how to, like, untangle your bait caster. And the guy's method works a lot of the times. But he was like, if you get the worst one ever, you, like... Lock it down and reel it in a couple times with your thumb on, on the line, and it's supposed to me mesh everything around really? and untangle it. And it'll work sometimes. <laughs> I've but never when I got that. my worst one, that did not work. <laughs> it did worse. not work. It just made it worse. Here, let me move mine. You're good. It was, it was pretty bad. Like That was probably the only one I've ever had to cut out. So... I'm a little gun-shy now of using that method. Jordan, when are you going to rig up a rod and join the join You the just want to use that one? Here. I'm, a, I'm, a, use that I'm one. afraid of the power of the Bullman rod. You got it. You can do uh, it. As some call me, I'm a little bit too much heathen. Uh, like, I need, might need you to untangle this. <laughs> Since you have all the untangling abilities there we go I got it I mean if you want a regular I feel like I'm slumming using this rod yeah no, no offense Abe welcome to the dark side <laughs> what did you say <laughs> I feel like I'm slumming using this rod <laughs> don't be a dick my ultralight rigs are ugly sticks and I always just use them till I blow out the factory rods or factory reels and then I put flugers on them that is a tangled mess now what is that bobber, I just kind of flung it end over end. <laughs> on, like you're using like the smallest bobber too. It seems like yeah. Like for night fishing, this is not the way to go. We need glow in the dark bobbers, ladies. Yeah. I'm kind of into this now. Uh, I've never <laughs> done a lot of night fishing. Right. Well, once you get one of those lights too, man, it's it's a game changer. It's a game. I always stopped huh? using that phrase. You did. You told me to stop using it. Told you it was. Yeah, but that's just so I could start using it. Okay, that's fine. So you said you're gonna make crappie cakes with all this, huh? Yeah, you try to. Do you know how? Um, I've seen a couple different ways. Um, <clears throat> I was going to use. Uh, I've seen boiling it. Uh huh. I've seen. Um, I'd grill it for more flavor. Okay, grill it. I would. Or sear it, pan sear it. I, mean, I guess I, I guess it depends on what you're going for. Boiling, it's gonna it's gonna cook it, obviously. Yeah. But it's gonna wash it out to not taste like anything. So it'll be fine. You can put all the spices and other, other shit you want in it. Yeah. It'll taste like that. But if you want some fish flavor, I don't know. Is that your bobber straight out? Yes, sir. <laughs> I saw like the gloves slowly floating by. Oh shit. I feel like this is a boring podcast. But I think it's a fun one. I mean, I think it's pretty boring for the people yeah. listening. It's fun for us because we're fishing. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, hey, I mean, this is uh, like we're just hanging out on the outdoors. We're, it looks like you got one. Come on. Me? Yeah, it was kind of dancing. Well, I forgot to say this at the beginning because we didn't really do a opening. But uh, one thing I want everyone to know that uh, during our live podcast with BHA, the guy asking all the questions, Jared Kennedy, was also the guy that wrote our intro music that we've switched to that you hear every time the podcast starts. And I wanted to definitely, we've uh, we, we've been bad friends about it, and not thanked him on the podcast yet. Yeah, that's but good uh, yeah, Jared, we can't uh, we can't thank you enough. Yeah, he. Uh, it sounds awesome. You caught the glove. I did catch the glove, and I'm. <laughs> God, that's gross. <laughs> that was gross. Yeah, Jared, thank you. 
thanks for your help the music I, I do believe it came about because we we're using some uh like free weird music metal type <laughs> we were using music a couple times and he said don't use that something. essentially anything i could get for free we yeah we let him know that you know we just use whatever's free and he said i got you and man he laid down a bunch of awesome tracks we picked the one that we use now man it was great is this minnow of mine dead did you hook him to the spine? Huh? Did you hook him to the spine? No. He's like that dolphin from that movie now, but he just still has a tail. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, don't you? No. Hey. I think you're talking about Air Bud, right? Air That's Bud. a dog. <laughs> That's because it's your dog. <laughs> That's how any dog could be a service dog. And there it goes. <laughs> the wheels have fallen off. Yeah. I don't know oh. where I did. I don't know where I just Did you went. Get hit? I think so. Why is the handle of that one on the left side, but the rest are on the right? <laughs> just switch it, Jordan. Be a good man. Help Abe out. <laughs> switch it. It's going to bother me. No, because I call this the ultimate stranger rod. <laughs> 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 if I use the opposite hand, it feels like it's someone else reeling it in, doesn't it? Absolutely. Why do you have a left and a right? I don't know. <laughs> he just didn't know he could I switch them. Do you know you can switch these? Yeah, no doubt. Um, I just... <laughs> <laughs> Do we believe you? No, probably not. <laughs> probably shouldn't, but... That's it's a... just... It's one of those things I just never did, you know? You know, it's just one of those... Uh... I mean, bank bobber fishing is the laziest form of fishing ever, so not saying you didn't have time... Is the worst excuse ever. Oh, there's no doubt. It's, it has nothing to do with time. It has to do with just caring, being lazy. <laughs> I want to sit here and drink beer and just watch, look at the water. If I would have known we were crappie fishing, I would have not brought all bass rigs. Like, I'm running 30 or 40 pound braid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and uh, I, I guess for a little bit of help out, if we're still on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> if you're still listening. Like, if anyone's still listening, I haven't turned us off yet. Uh, you really want to use light tackle for crappie, and you don't want to set hard hooks. They have soft mouths. That's probably what I did just a second ago. Yeah, yeah. yank it probably, out of mouth. There's probably, like, a, a, a split mouth crappie out there now, thanks to Grinch. But bobber fishing's a lot of fun, right? I, I think it is. I've, I've, I've bobber fished a lot If you got other things to do life. around it, if you, this is all you're doing, eh. Yeah. By yourself, it's the worst. Unless you drink a bunch of beer. <laughs> okay. I mean, that, I feel like that's a caveat to anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is the worst. What if you drink 30 beers? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, it's probably fine then. It's all right. Do you want to go to the seminar with me and listen to this guy talk? No. Nope. No. Do you want to go to the seminar and drink 30 beers? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yep. Yep. Jordan, are you fishing? Yeah. Where's your bobber? Right there. Way over there? It's that little tiny thing, that little specky yellow. I can't see it. Right there. Oh. The thing's sitting deep. I didn't set this rig up. This is full Bullman rigged. This is a, this is still a Bullman rig, but it's completely different from the other Bullman rig. <laughs> I was about to say, holy so, shit, there's a fish floating right there. And <laughs> I realized, oh, it's your stringer. <laughs> oh, wait. So one thing I do have that I will gripe about your rod and reel, Abe, is I really think you need to clean it once. And I I'll say that a lot about a lot of things. Let me tell you this, boys. I know what you're going to say. I and I like it. <laughs> I treat my fishing reels like you boys treat shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> like tools. Well, That's how I treat but all see, my like, guns. like when, when the shotgun starts, you know, acting up and like not, you know, which it never has. Exactly. There you go. But this thing uh, has some like little um, stiffness to it when you're ro- reeling it in every now and then. I'm really surprised, you know, like you can see in the, the headlamp light a little bit of uh it looks like a little moisture and stuff, but I'm really surprised it didn't start raining or anything on us. It sprinkled all day. It was not supposed to rain. Lauren and I were on the bike, and there were two or three times as I'm like, shit, 
We're about to get real wet. Or I am. Like that time was like when the first podcast we went to over at Abe's. We rode the bikes. Yep. And we got drenched on. Oh yeah, that was squirrely. Yeah, yeah. it got it got. Well, remember I almost laid the bike over. You got. I looked at my rear view and you were squirrely. Did you get another fish? Oh. Did you get off? I did have another fish. Right out there. I wish I had my good headlamps so bad. Well, man, guys, we appreciate you bearing with us as we live podcast from Rowlett Creek while bobber fishing. Yeah. <laughs> what started sand bass and turned to a mad crappie fishing Which experience. Mad, mad crappie experience. Um, it, Next weekend, uh, we'll be at the... Texas Fly Fishing and Brew Festival up in Plano. Yes. Uh, I think Sunday is when we're all going to probably be up there. We're going to try to podcast from up there and, you know. Yeah, that sounds good. Sure. I think by the time this podcast comes out, though, that would have already have happened. Yeah, we're, we're, we're a week ahead. Jordan, you're we? talking to yourself in the future. <laughs> Isn't that fun to do? <laughs> Mind blown. Exactly. Um, well, but we do have the ASA shoot coming up yes, in Paris, Texas. Paris, Texas. Which we'll be, uh, we will be alongside of our good friend JT Larkin from the Hook and Arrow podcast. So that'll be a that'll be a fun experience. For sure. <clears throat> He's a good fella. Yeah, if y'all want to take a trip out there, it should be pretty fun. Uh, I know it's a long haul from the DFW, but yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we have some people out maybe near Paris, Texas that listen to this. and Yeah. Come on out. Meet us. Well, Commerce. Commerce is close enough. You could probably come if you're a student in East Texas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that'd be close enough. I mean, and if you don't want to come for us, come for Campbell's Soup, because that's where Campbell's Soup's made. Oh, yeah. I always forget that. I know, right? Oh, y'all be good.